hey Tip, we want you back up here at Seward Park. What would you, would you like to do a workshop? And I said, yeah, sure. And then he said, if you could do a workshop with anyone, who would you like to do it with? So I said, Tony Marsh. I was part of the figurative symposium down at Cal State Long Beach, which was put on by Tony. And I loved his reflection, how he spoke, he spoke with such wisdom, I thought, about the whole experience of work in general. And he hosted, he was a very generous host to all of us down there. And, uh, and he sort of guided us into this very deep part of our understanding of our own work. So I just wanted to be around that some more. The field of ceramics needs to be encouraged to be experimental. The way in which I like to teach is to try to fill voids, you know. So I, I sense a void somewhere and I try to fill it in my program. At this point in time, I also understand the value of teachers, <laughs> teachers taking risks in front of students, you know. And so I thought, I'm, I think I'll just come, I'd, I would love to come and, and, and be within the safety net of tip. And, um, and, and then just try to do something I've never done. And I did, and I had to think, do I want to practice this so I can, I know what I'm doing? I said, absolutely not, I, I don't. I love the sensitivity and I love the story that each person's hand would specifically tell about that character. So that's the individuality of the hand, but then there's this enormity of the hand through cultures that's also so big. So you could just do hand workshops for years, really, and never have to repeat. You could always be in new territory. Each culture is, is embedded in the hand in so many different ways, in symbolic ways, in actual ways, in talking with the hand and gesturing. And it's forever, you know, the very first cave paintings were outlining hands. And so I mean, it's just such an enormous field. So, and there's so much expression. It's often gotten wrong, often. It's, but it's also so, uh, it's potent, basically. There's no, no singular eight square inches on the body that's as complex as this, just the, the, the way in which it needs to, that articulates and that the, the complexity and all the joints and and the expressiveness and um, I, I feel like it's just rich for a sculptor um, to work with or anyone really because it's just it's a delicious it's so delicious you know that you have to dig in and understand all this stuff and all these relationships and I think Tip was saying yesterday if you asked everyone to go home and make a hand but don't look at any models they get it so wrong on all bodies and faces, whatever I'm sculpting, I get really teeny. I have to sort of shrink myself in order to be able to understand this as landscape. So I really like thinking about this as territory. And it's like, if I'm an inchworm, I'm kind of crawling over, and then I imagine, all right, what's the highest lookout point um, <laughs> if I would go? And then you get down into these sort of grooves, and then you get these flat side of the finger. So it makes you have to get really, little really sensitive in terms of the details of the planes and all of the where you'd have a hard time crossing over all of the lumpy stuff and and then the hard back of the hand against the soft palm there's just a lot to has the color differentiation uh, so there's a lot of subtlety um, it's not just these tube fingers and so the it's like any subject the more into it you get the more amazed you can't help but be. There are things I marvel at and and where she heightens my awareness about the you know what art is actually and um, one is that she's worked enormously hard and, and will have to co probably continue to do it the rest of her life um, just to understand her cra the craft end of what she does because I don't think figurative sculptors ever fully master the body or fully master anatomy they're always trying to learn um, how to go deeper into that. It's just, it's a lifelong pursuit. She deals with the psychology of being alive and somehow embeds that in the figure and does it in very, very complicated ways that are very abstract and hard to nail down and hard to hit right on the money, you know? And uh, so you end up, <clears throat> her work is like, a, is like a conduit to an idea. It's, it doesn't stop at the, at the object where you marvel at how, what a wonderful maker she is. You, you kind of just sail past that. 
and, and enter into the world of her ideas, you know? And so it makes you reflect on life. Maybe, maybe it touches something in your own experience, which is great if you have it. If not, maybe it just allows you to reflect on, on the value of being alive or the quality of being alive. There's so much expectation of making good stuff, having a good product at the end of making anything. And it's just almost, it can kind of kill the process of discovery. And he's all about, let's discover what can happen if you do this and that. So I just take my hat off to Tony, who's just brave. Um, it's, a, it's way more safe to do, even though I feel like I'm, uh, this whole thing could flub in a big way. Um, it's a little safer to have those are all the anatomy books in front of you, the charts, the handouts, and uh, I have sort of more of a map to go on. To make self-portraits um, as an older woman uh, that are nude, I don't see anybody doing that. Very, very rare. It's, it, it takes a kind of personal um, security and a uh, shamelessness and that... a complete shamelessness <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no I mean it, it, that that is and 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 to take on the kinds of subject matter that you do as well that are sometimes pretty edgy and may even get you into trouble you know um, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop you and and that's that's artistic courage you know tips wallflower child, you know, the, the poor girl at the dance that no one will dance with. Just all, all, I mean, we all understand that, you know, and, and so, somehow Tip can make you feel that pain, you know, the, it, it's, you know, that's what great art does, makes you feel things and examine things and think about things and, you know, so I really admire Tip on, on both ends, the craft end that never, it's never going to stop. And, and the ambition too, you know, it's not that easy to make this work, even for young um, muscular people. And yet, it, she seems to be becoming more and more ambitious uh, with the scale of her work and, uh, and all those things. So, um, there's nothing about Tip I don't admire artistically. I grew up wanting to be a baseball player, except I hated baseball players to be around them. I loved the game, but I didn't like the people, you know. And um, I was so relieved to finally land in the world of art. And as time has gone on, I, I value artists so much. I admire them so much and I'm at their service, really, is the way I feel. The goal, ultimately, is to find our voice. Deviations and labyrinths that we go in order to finally, but we're all aiming for that same truth, like we're all aiming to know God, ultimately, I think. My first memory in life was, uh, maybe I was three, and I was sitting in my grandmother's lap, and she was drawing uh, little faces on my fingernails and singing songs. Oh. That's my first memory in life, was uh, the hand. Oh, that's so yeah. cute. My mother used to pick up her skin. Now I can do it. I can pick doesn't it up, and it doesn't back. really doesn't snap <laughs> back, and it's like, oh, dear. Not good. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs>